I hope you all saw, you should have seen the email with the photo instructions, just some guidelines, kind of give you some idea of like ways to include valuable information in the photos. And also, you know, try and screen your photos. So, you know, you're not sending me stuff that's super washed out or real blurry or stuff. Um, kind of like that one, <laughs> just mess around April. She was trying to get this, the ring on here. So I understand. And when we're on our phones, it's hard to tell if your image looks good. You might look at the phone and go, oh, that looks pretty good. And then you look at it big and you're like, oh my, how did I think that looked good? So I understand. I don't expect you guys to be sending me perfect pristine photos, but try your best. Um, anyway, so little brown mushrooms, you can see it was very cold. Um, and so these are popping up, growing from wood. Uh, this looks like this was Gallerina marginatum, the deadly Gallerina, one you got to be careful with. Um, comes up quite often, just about any time of the year, even when it's really, really cold out. Um, not much else, you know, that you're going to be out there foraging to eat. So I guess it's not that big of a deal, but you certainly, it's a good one to, to keep your eye on and, and have some knowledge about if you are planning on putting any, um, bringing anything home for the pot. All right, uh, another here submitted by April Thompson. You guys have probably seen these if you're walking out in the woods there. It's a fairly common one. Um, the little fruit bodies are kind of like create a bit of a mosaic um, on the wood. Sometimes they can have little caps that kind of hang over, but this is Xylobolus frustulatus, which the common name is ceramic parchment due to that mosaic pattern that it, that it creates. Um, I always like finding this one, even though it's not, you know, gonna jump out at you. It's it's a pretty little fun guy. All right, Estella Waldman found this growing on her firewood. I'm sure lots of you guys, if you have piles of firewood, are seeing all kinds of little polypores popping up. Um, so if you've been look, watching the tables, I'm sure this looks fairly familiar to you. Uh, it's a polypore looking up at the underside. You can see it's got a white undersurface. Um, if we were to see it a little bit closer, it'd be little pores. Um, this one's fairly light colored and it might be a little furry. Um, so I don't wanna jump right on uh, Trimedes versicolor, which is the true turkey tail. Um, this may just be a different species in that genus. There's quite a few in the genus. Um, you know, large, small, some that look similar to Versicolor. And this may be a pale version of Versicolor or it may be a different species. There's stuff like pubescence can be a, a lighter color like this and a little bit furry on it. Um, and then there's other things like this one here found by Felix Mitchell. This was in Tremedes got bumped to Pycnoporus, and then I believe they've bumped it back to uh, Tremedes again. This is Tremedes cenobarina. This is a beautiful orangey red polypore that you can find, uh, pops out at you. It's hard to miss if it's up. Um, uh, just imagine if it, was, if it snowed, this stuff would really be popping out. Um, not, I don't believe it has the medicinal qualities and um, you would think it would have some sort of dyeing qualities with the color it has, but apparently it doesn't even have that. But it is nice to look at. This here is the undersurface and it's also rough. It's not white like uh, Tremedes versicolor. Um, it's actually this similar red orange color. It's actually tends to be a little, a little bit brighter red, um, but it is rough and has pores on it. All right, this one was submitted by Benny Bissois, uh, found at Lake Le Needwood. I believe this was a little bit earlier in the year. Some of these might jump back and forth. They weren't all found this month, uh, but considering there's probably not too much up uh, right now, uh, we're gonna be a lot of polypores anyway. Um, so uh, this one, I'm trying to mess with this bar over here and I don't know what to do with it. Um, so anyway, this one, looks like this is a Cortinarius. This is one you, if you're hunting bluets, you need to be careful with. You can see it kind of has some violet coloration here. Uh, when it was younger, it might've been a little bit uh, 
more purple. There's quite a few uh, violet tinged Cortinarius out there. Cortinarius have rusty spore prints. You can see that these gills are kind of turning this brownish coloration. This is the spores. This may also be the spores collecting here. This may be Cortinarius alba violaceus. There's quite a few in this grouping. A lot of them have bulbous bases. Uh, Cortinarius are called Cortinarius because they have a what they call a Cortina. So when it's young, if, if we were to see this one flipped over, you might see it. It's like a partial veil that is protecting the gills before that cap opens up. And it's very cobwebby. Um, so that is what the Cortina is. Um, if you do find something like this, give it a whiff. Some of these, there, something like um, Cortinarius traganus might have a fruity aroma, although if it's getting a little bit older, it might be kind of smelling funny. I believe they have one that smells like pears. Of course, you don't want to find the ones that smell like old goat or rotten potatoes, but at least that might point you in a direction if you're not certain. Um, but if you are looking for something like Baluets for the pot and you're not certain, doing a spore print will help you to get to the correct genus and species. And Cortinarius rusty and the Lapista nudo, the bluets, would be a light colored spore print. All right, Marilyn Mendel submitted this one. Um, gorgeous, I love it. It's so bright, cobalt, beautiful blue coloration. And we just had a crust talk, what, it's a couple of months ago, I think. So this fits right in with that. Um, I don't think I've ever found it this bright blue, um, but this is one of those like supernate crusts that just grow flat on the wood. Um, this is Terrena cer cerulea. They call it the cobalt blue crust. Um, it does fade once it gets a little bit older. So it must have been nice being able to find it with this bright blue coloration on it. John McKinley Ward found this uh, November in DC. Uh, many of you may recognize this. We had quite a few of these on the table and I'm sure if you were out in the woods, you saw quite a few. Um, back to the old Armillaria stoyae, the honey mushrooms. Um, remember that Gallerina earlier. Uh, these tend to grow a bit bigger. Uh, these have fibrils on the cap. The Gallerina is glabrous or smooth, so it, it doesn't have any fibrils on the cap. Um, the Gallerina would have a rusty spore print. This would have a white spore print. You can see there's kind of a ring on here. This ring is more of a white ring and um, the gallerina tends to have more of a brownish, orangish ring on it. Um, both grow, grow on wood, um, but honey mushrooms are good edibles if you can find them fresh. Anyway, that's a little flashback, a couple months. All right, John also found this one. You may remember this one from last month. Uh, John Harper had submitted one. Um, you can see here, this is actually a little bit of collection of spores happening there. So you wouldn't need a spore print necessarily, but he got one anyway, which is good practice. Uh, so you can see that the gills kind of have a greenish tinge. This is pretty typical of this genus. There's a couple species in the genus that we find pretty often around here. Um, one of them is a yellow mushroom, and then there's this one. Um, those are the most common ones that, that we find, but they both have this distinct greenish cast. And when the spores start maturing, they get this kind of smoky gray purple coloration. And the spore print is like a black purple coloration. Typoloma lateritius or lateritium, um, brick tops. Um, you might see it in the books as sub lateritium. Uh, they've changed it relatively recently. Um, this is an edible. Uh, it's not too bad. Some collections can be um, can be better. And of course, it grows on wood, so be careful. Know what you're picking. Dylan Howes found this in Patapsco Valley State Park. Um, doesn't look like much once you zoom in a little closer. Hey, we got another flashback to the past yes, last month and the month before. Um, 
there, if you look close towards the bottom, it looks like it's beginning to get that fuzzy foot. I was actually kind of surprised that it didn't have as much of a fuzzy foot as it, as it does, um, considering their age. But I believe these are Flamelina volutipes, which is the velvet foot or the enoki. They do like cold weather. And you can see here growing with the snow right around them. Um, I believe Thomas said that in order to get them to fruit, you had to chill the substrate to like 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just to be able to make them fruit. All right, Dylan found this one as well, a little blurry there. So let's go to the next one. And you can see it's got these almost little nest looking things, but it kind of looks like turkey tail. It's got these zonations in here, um, but it's very nest-like. So this is typical of the growth stature of this guy. Uh, I believe it was Tremedes. It got sent over to Poronigulus contrifer, which is the, called the little nest polypore. Um, and it might be back in Tremedes, but I kind of like Poronigulus, so I'm gonna stick with that for now. Um, this is uh, another polypore. Sometimes it will grow more shelf-like and not completely enclose into a nest like this, um, but it's pretty distinctive. And sometimes it can have some more darker colorations but very often you find it's gonna be these little nest shapes. All right, Cassia Deemer found this at Patapsco in the Avalon area, um, New Year's Day. Um, so you guys may recognize this. We've had some of these uh, in probably April and May and also through the summer. These have been pretty common this year. This is usually found or more commonly found during morel season and Usually when they're fresh and young, they're gonna be much oranger on the top, kind of like a brownie orange. And it's got these really distinct angular hexagonal pores. This is uh, Neofabulus alveolaris. It used to be Polyperus mori, then it was Polyperus alveolaris. Now it's Neofabulus alveolaris. It's a hexagonal pored polypore. Um, it's not very big. They're about usually about as big as a quarter or a half dollar. Um, it's always kind of cool finding these though. All right, Shelly Bockstein found this in Oregon. So we're jumping to the West Coast. Um, that's okay, because we can find these here. Um, we don't too have too many conifers. I believe this is a conifer that this is growing from. And we've seen these in the past on the mushroom table and probably in your neck of the woods as well. Uh, this is one of the varnish shelves. Um, so it's a Ganoderma, but this one growing on conifer is going to be Ganoderma suge, which is um, also known as Rishi. Um, but we usually find some of the other ones since we have mostly oak and, and hardwoods in our area. Um, this would have the medicinal qualities um, as well. All right. All right. Rachel Courtney found this in Solomon's Island, Maryland. Um, looks like a big pale glob, right? Um, so once we flip it over, you can see it's got lots of lamellulae here. Um, this looks to me uh, very clytosabe. Um, I, I guess it's kind of hard to describe. Um, if you know bluets, they're clytosabe lipista. Um, they tend to have these inrolled mar or margins, a lot of times a little bit wavy. Once you start seeing mushrooms, they features start standing out and it kind of group, it, it allows you to group them in your mind in a way. And so they have a look. I, I, I'm sorry, I have a hard time explaining exactly what it is that gives it that look, but it's the way that the gills are attached, the way the gills, you know, to the stem and different features like that. And so this looks very much something like a, a bluet, but bluets tend to be more purple, even though they can be washed out. Um, I do have to warn though that some clytosabe, especially in the white pale ones, um, there, there are some that contain muscarine. So if you've got a pale, you know, pale clytosabe and you're not certain what it is, um, know that there are some like clytosabe de albata. That one usually has a bit, bit more decurrent gills where it'll kind of come down the stem a little bit. 
Um, so I'm not sure that this is what it is, but they do have that muscarine, which can cause like sweating and it can be very unpleasant. Um, but anyway, this is a Clytosabe species. I don't know that I, you know, there is a kind of a pale blue it called arena, but I'm not sure that this is what this is as well. A lot of times smelling things and looking at them in hand can give you a much better idea. All right, Milton actually found this near his house. You can see the roads right there. I guess he was taking a walk. Um, and we've been seeing these almost probably every ID table um, for some months now. Um, zooming in, you've got your dark caps. Um, uh, I believe he said that he took this before I had sent out the notification. And so next time he'll try and remember to turn one over so that we can see the gills on the underside or the pores or whatever it would be. But this is most likely gills. Uh, this does look like your typical winter oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus. Looks like there might be even be some turkey tail growing there on the stump with it. Um, there were a couple other folks that submitted oysters, so they're up right you now. Some oysters popped up recently. Um, they're around. And this was submitted by Rachel Courtney. And I'm not sure if you guys recognize this. It sure looks cool, but it sure is kind of sad because that is a delicious mushroom when it's fresh. <laughs> this is Horitia marinaceus. It's just old and decrepit and frozen up. Um, usually they'll start have decaying, but maybe the cold weather kind of stopped any of the organisms that would really break it down. Um, so this is a good example of, uh, yeah, that's an edible mushroom, but I sure wouldn't eat it. All right, and Corey Kahn sent this one. Uh, you saw one of these in part of Elizabeth's presentation. Uh, it's growing from a black locust. So you can see black locusts have these like deeply furrowed ropey bark. Um, in the spring, they have lovely white edible flowers um, that kind of indicate that you're coming to the end of morel season. Um, but this is a big woody, hard conch, Philinus rubiniae, uh, which is indicative of the genus name of the black locust. It's the cracked cap polypore. And you can see why they call it that looking closer here with all these cracks in the cap there. Almost exclusively on black locust. I believe it can grow on other things, but around here, this is where you'll see them. It's a really nice picture then. All right, this last one uh, by T. Nasser. I told him, I don't think this is fungi, uh, but it is pretty cool looking. Um, I suggested it may be roots growing under the bark. So for instance, if this piece of bark was here and some plant was trying to grow and the bark was blocking it and the bark fell away. Um, because I don't think it's fungi, but I may be wrong. And if anybody wants to give us a suggestion or you think, type it up in the chat and see if you guys uh, have any suggestions of what this thing is, because I have no idea. It's kind of cool though. Anyway, thank you for the submissions. Um, I there were a couple. Sorry if I missed your uh, didn't weren't wasn't, didn't put yours in the presentation. I have saved a couple of colorful mushrooms in an extras folder, so maybe next month, um, if you guys have a couple of cool colorful fungi, just send me a couple. Don't send me like. 50. It gets kind of crazy trying to go through all of them. But pick a couple of your favorites and send me some colorfuls and maybe we'll have some, you know, some flashbacks to some colorful mushrooms next table ID. Anyway, thank you much. And uh, I'll let you guys go from here. <laughs>